All right, prediction time, and uh, we'll get you out of here. Actually, have Kean White, future king of uh, cringe comedy, I believe, who's going to finish this up with a four minute drill. I recorded with yeah. him in the locker room earlier this week. But prediction: uh, Am I am I getting birds from Seahawks fan? What, what who wins? I'm going to pick the Patriots. I, I right. just maybe 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 this is me falling in love with my preseason prediction. Maybe it's me just being too hyped about what we saw last week. I, I do think. The Patriots are really good at communicating. I think it plays a big role in this game in terms of their ability to cover on defense. I think they can give Geno some trouble. I think they can control the line of scrimmage on defense. The offense is going to be scary. I think it's going to be a, a ugly, low-scoring game. And in that kind of game, I think playing at home is a big difference. I think playing on your body clock is a big difference. I think having a special teams advantage can be a big difference. So... I will say like the Patriots 16, Seahawks 13, maybe like a really low scoring game, kind of similar to last week. Um, I think the Patriots get the dub. So we just played jerk or no jerk. You said no jerk. Mm -hmm. Everyone listening now is going to say jerk. I have the same score. Just scratch that and reverse it. Oh, Seahawks 16, okay. Patriots 13, which feels very much like that. It's a three and a half point spread. Week two, pick the favorite, but the Pats technically cover kind of like, okay, cool take your prediction. <laughs> but for all the reasons you said, I think it will be ugly on offense. I think the talent disparity is notable on both sides. And there's just one error that it takes for DK to spring loose or Tyler Lockett. We really didn't even talk about it, led them in catches yeah. and receiving yards. And people know Tyler Lockett, but like, it's not as simple again as it was last week. Shut down Jamar Chase, get out of there with the win. There are more weapons here, but it's wacky. It's week two. Uh, let's move on to uh, Seahawks and Patriots. Both teams want to know Patriots a home opener, three point dogs in the home opener. There's obviously a lot of good vibes based on their victory in week one, upsetting Cincinnati. We know about Cincinnati's history in early season games under Zach Taylor. They're terrible. Never mind the Jamar Chase nonsense. No T. Higgins in that game, but whatever. The Patriots. Played some bully ball. They were they were the more physical team. They were the more well prepared team. They didn't make mistakes in that game. Feels like they're going to need the same formula against the Seahawks. And not that I believe the Seahawks are a great team. And obviously, it's a difficult challenge for any West Coast team to come and play a one o'clock game. You're essentially waking up at like five in the morning your time and playing. You know, warming up at seven o'clock and the, the whole nine yards. Um, so for me, all that stuff and I look at. Can the Patriots offensive line hold up against what Mike McDonald does, what he wants to do? Denver certainly couldn't do it. And we know how uh, well-regarded Sean Payton is as an offensive mind. There was a lot of pressure. Yes, he had a rookie quarterback back there. They struggled to run the football in that game. Patriots offensive line was not nearly as good as people try are continuing to try to make it out after week one. This is a, a far greater challenge for them. And I'm just curious, can they do – they're going to have to do better because there were a lot of miscommunications. And when you talk about the McDonald defense, this Ravens defense that he's brought to Seattle, it's about where the pressure is coming from. He's showing seven, but only four are coming, but they're not the four you expect. And communication and following your rules has to be perfect for this offensive line that's still coming together. And in the game against Cincinnati, where I don't think Lou Anarumo went crazy in that game in terms of some of the stuff that he had dialed up basically I think he kind of felt like you can't block Trey Hendrickson he's going to ruin the game for you and he and he and he almost did um but I'm I'm curious with the amount of free rushers they gave up in that first game if now you're talking about a scheme that like is predicated on that is the communication it's going to have to be significantly better for them to have sort of a duplicate performance in terms of you know ground success and keeping Jacoby Brissett I mean, he had one sack, but he was under pressure 52% of the time. That's that's not usually a good recipe for continued success going forward. Yeah, I was going to go out on a limb and say that I think the Patriots start 2-0. Um, my worry is that, as you mentioned, I think you mentioned Ramondre got hit or whatever, whoever the running back at the time in each play was, like 26 to 32 times by the line yeah. of scrimmage. I think pressured on 50-plus percent of snaps. I, don't, I think that obviously – in my opinion, Cincinnati's defense talent wise, especially up front is very good, but, yeah. and it's on the road and, you know, first game. And there's a, there's a lot to be made of that. They're going to need to be so good on defense, which I think they can be. And they're a really good defense. Obviously New England was a year ago. and They've been for forever. Uh, you know, look, I, the Broncos rushed for four yards a pop. Uh, they didn't get to run the ball enough. They were kind of what the Patriots offense was in a lot of ways, where they just 
threw the ball two or three yards down the field and, and ran the football and tried to play, you know, it's a, it a close game. I feel like the biggest reason to kind of feel like New England wins this game is home opener, really well-disciplined team. Can you get a turnover out of Geno or can you get something, you know, something wonky? The two safeties last week were, were nuts. Special teams wise, the Patriots have been good in the past. Can they continue that? And, you know, obviously you mentioned it's a one o'clock second week, of early season still. It's the weird, you know, we just saw the Jets kind of go through where they look like the days gold in the beginning of that game. That was a night game, let alone, you know, obviously, um, you know, Seahawks coming here and warming up at, you know, five, six a.m. their time. McDonald, you would assume it's two, you know, two first time head coaches, both of whom style kind of took over the game in both games. So credit to both coaches. Seattle's obviously more talented. They they should win this game. They're probably looking at this as like a, a gimme. Um, I also feel like New England, New England's got two games in five days here that they probably feel like, can we steal one of these and start two and one? And again, further emphasize Gerard Mayo, further emphasize some of these young players, Christian Gonzalez on, on DK, how much they kind of deploy him in man, how much they let him shadow him. Um, yeah, I, I just think this is one of those games where like, I, I said it, and I will pull up the receipts. I think the Dolphins, I said it before last night's game that it would be Buffalo 2-0, New England 2-0, Jets 1-1, Miami 1-1, Miami in last place based on a conference loss. I'm going to stick to it, but I, I just, I think we're getting 2-0 New England going up to MetLife and, or going down to MetLife in, in four days. And um, I might be wrong and they might get, they might lose by 30, but I don't know. I have a feeling that New England's going to be one of those spunky teams the first couple of weeks. And then the talent will take over as the season goes on. So when I had them preseason, I, I you know, before the season predictions, five and 12, and, but this was a game I had them winning. So I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with it again. I don't, the roster is not good, but it's been a good start. I think they can finally get a win at home. They were one and seven, actually one and eight. If you want to count the Germany game, cause they were technically the home team at home last year, like start to build a culture of like, Hey, we play well here. It's not easy to come here and play. I'm going to go with the Patriots and I'm going to go with the Patriots for a couple of reasons. Number one, the travel. Seattle to New England. You're going to hear that a lot, and I think it's legitimate. This is a, a 10 a.m. kickoff for those guys. First game like that this season for them. The, the the offensive line, you could argue, is worse for Seattle than the Patriots' offensive line right now, especially if Fant can't get out there and he didn't practice yesterday. Kenneth Walker not practicing. I think that's a big deal. It, it, even if he's playing at like 70% and he's limited, I think that really impacts the offense for Seattle. I'm going to go Patriots 17-13 in uh, not the most fun game to watch at times. What do you think? Um, so a uh, couple things. First of all, the, this game opened at four, um, Seattle by four. I actually, when I looked, um, and I, I don't know, I forgot the place where I used to look at the lines and it used to have a bunch of different places. And I don't know, maybe you, you know a good place, but um on I think at least on ESPN when I looked, it had it down to two and a half. Mm. Um, you know, but I saw other places where it was it seemed like it was three and a half at most places. Um you know, I there a lot of that I I agree with you. I do think the West Coast team coming east and playing a one o'clock game and and I think it's very real. And in fact, you know, three of my six predicted Patriots wins were in that circumstance, Seattle, the Rams and the chargers, which we don't know what game time, what time that game's going to be, but I don't know. I, I would imagine it's one o'clock could be four o'clock. Um, depends on how the teams do, um, before the end of the season. Um, and I also, you know, so I picked the Patriots to win this game before the season. Me of course too. I had them losing week one, barely, um, before the season, I definitely thought the Patriots were going to be competitive against the the, the Bengals. Um, of course, when I predicted all that, I didn't know T. Higgins was going to be out, and you know whatever. Uh, I don't know. I if they would have lost last week, I definitely would probably pick them this week. <laughs> um, you know, for the Patriots to be two and zero, and look, even if they're two and zero, Nick, um, I would caution people like. Just still relax. Right. I still don't think it changes things. We see this every year where there's some team due to the schedule or whatever, or they're ready and the opponents aren't ready. There are always teams that start fast that end up completely fading. Like, 
it happens every single year. And the Patriots could be that team this year. They could be 2-0. and They could be 3-0 and with how the Jets looked against the 49ers and Aaron Rodgers playing, you know, on what, four days rest um, at his age. Um, who knows what's going to happen? But look, the bottom line is I just think the Seahawks are just better in too many places. And I do think the travel um, works to the Patriots' advantage. I do like Mike McDonald. I listened to some of his press conferences this week. Um, he impresses me with it. He's a very smart guy. I mean, I don't know how many feelings he is, and I don't know if he's on the vibes train like Gerard Mayo is, but in terms of analyzing and understanding how to win a game, I think he's I think he's excellent. Um, we'll see what kind of head coach he is. Um, but I just think they're the Seahawks are better. Let's just say the offense – let's say the coaching is even in this game with two first year head coaches and what have you. Um, I just think, I think the, the Seahawks have the better quarterback. They have the better left tackle. They have, I think all three of their receivers are better than anybody. The Patriots have, I think their defensive personnel is better than the Patriots. And for that reason, I'm going to pick the Seahawks, um, 23, 23, 17. Taylor, what do you got? Yeah, I'm going because they won last week when I went with my heart homers, instead of my brain. Homers, I'm going to do that again. I'm doing it again. I think the Patriots do win this one. I'm going with more like a 21, 17 kind of game. I do hesitate to even predict that either one of these teams is going to get over 20. I will like I want to put a fat asterisk next to that. I just that number is in my head. Uh, but I just think that this is going to be an opportunity for the staff, for the Patriots offense to show that they really are as versatile and flexible as they say they are. So they don't have to just be a duo team. Maybe they can run wide zone, win by passing the ball. You know, hopefully we see that. But I think the Pats can definitely pull this one out. So I picked against the Patriots last week and they proved me wrong. So I'm going to jump on the Homer train. I was going to say, I'll jump on the Homer train with Taylor. Somehow, some way, this Patriots team gets to 2-0. and Similar score prediction to Taylor. I have 20-17 to written down. Uh, I think the Patriots can hold off. Uh, I do think it's going to be a close game. All of us picked one-score games. I think it's going to be tight. I think it's going to be fun. I think both teams, win or lose, you would hope, still can gain some momentum and yeah. keep moving forward. And regardless of, you know, the final score, they continue to build that identity. Support us and sign up at Prize Picks. Go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS or download the app today and use code CLNS at prizepicks.com slash CLNS and get $50 instantly when you play $5.